Hello, my name is Brian Patrick. I'm an IronSpeed MVP. And in this video, we're going to show how to deploy an IronSpeed application using Web Deploy to Microsoft Azure. I've gone ahead and I've created a virtual server in uh, Microsoft Azure, and I've created an application that we're going to deploy to that virtual server. This is just a very simple one page show table application that hits a Microsoft uh, Azure database and just displays a table uh, from my database. Example, this is just an example program. Um, if we try to use the deployment wizard from the iron speed, what happens is, since this is a .NET 4.5 and I've targeted Visual Studio 2013, when I try to publish to cloud, it tells me that I need to use Visual Studio 2013 for this method of deployment. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, let's go ahead and close this. Now if we look at my server, I'm in the Microsoft Azure dashboard for my virtual server, and I've gone ahead and installed IIS and opened up port 80, just so that we can see that the web server is working uh, before we try to deploy our application. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Right now it's just the static um, uh, IIS page that comes with IIS when you install it. And we're going to overwrite this default website with our application. Okay. So the first thing we need to do uh, now that we know that IIS is working, our application is working, the first thing we need to do is go to our virtual server, which I've remote desktoped into, and we need to make a small change to uh, IIS that's going to allow us to use Web Deploy. And there's a very easy way to install Web Deploy on your server. And the easy way to do that is to run the IIS manager. And when you pick the server, uh, you'll get this pop up that says, Do you wish to use the Web Platform Installer? And we're going to use that to install Web Deploy on our server. This is a brand new Azure server. Go ahead and we'll run our web deploy. Now this is the first time I've installed it, so I'm going to go ahead and install Microsoft Web Platform Installer. Okay, this doesn't take very long to install. Okay, so the Web Platform Installer is installed, and what we want to do is we want to look for something called Web Deploy. So we go to Products and type in Web Deploy. We're going to see there's several that come up, and the one that we're looking for is one called Web Deploy for Hosting Services. Hosting Servers, sorry. Click on Add, and we'll install that. And what this will do, this will make all the changes necessary to your Azure server so that we can use the Web Deploy from Visual Studio 2013 to publish our application. Let's go ahead and accept it. Now this will actually take a little while, so there's 31 steps. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so that you don't have to sit here and wait for it. Okay, I'm back. That, uh, that actually took about five minutes to run the web platform installer to install the web deploy, uh, but I didn't want to let you make to uh, make you sit through that, so I went ahead and paused the recording. But uh, now we're back and we installed, and there was a couple of errors when it was installing. Uh, I had a problem installing the .NET 3.5 on my new server, but that's okay because my application is .NET 4.5. Okay. The important thing is that the web deploy 3.5 was installed okay. Let's go ahead and close that and close that. Now we need to make sure that we can close the inter Internet Information Services Manager so that it can pick up the changes that that web uh, platform installer made to our server. Okay. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and open up another port in our server so that we can access the web deploy from outside uh, Microsoft Azure. So if we go back to our Azure panel, and we go back to our, our virtual server and go to our endpoints, we need to add another endpoint to that. You remember we added port 80 so that we can access the website, but we need to add one more port to that. And we will call that web deploy. And the port that we need to add is 8172. Okay, and we'll let that, and while that's uh, modifying our, our Azure virtual server, let's go back to the server and we will do the other steps necessary. Okay, back in our server, let's go ahead and reload our uh, Internet Information Services Manager. Okay, we've reloaded it, and now what we'll see is that it has actually added an option to all the websites on our virtual server. Okay, we don't need to run the web platform installer again, and if we go to our default website that I installed and right-click, we're going to see a new option called Deploy. 
And what that does is that it allows us to use the web deploy from Visual Studio, from Visual Studio 2013 to deploy our IronSpeed application to this website. Now we could have done this on any of the websites, but since the only one on this new server is the default website, we'll go ahead and use that one. Okay, so we configure web deploy publishing. And what this does is it, it uh, gives us a little wizard that lets us make uh, what's called a publish settings file that we can import into Visual Studio. There's a couple of changes we need to make to this file, and we can either make it here or we can make it on the Visual Studio side. And I'll go ahead and make them once we import this file. Just a couple of minor changes uh, to the name of the of the server. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and click on go ahead and click on setup. And what that did is it created a, a file on my desktop, on my virtual server desktop, that I need to import into Visual Studio. Okay, let's close everything. And you can see this file right here, this uh, web publishing files. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say copy. And then go back to my local machine. And we'll just paste that right onto my desktop. Okay, so now we have this IS deploy file this publish settings file that we're going to use in Visual Studio to publish our application. Okay, let's go back to IronSpeed. IronSpeed wants you to use Visual Studio to publish it, so let's go ahead and launch Visual Studio. Now we could run the application here to make sure that it works still within Visual Studio, but I'm just going to go ahead and publish it to my virtual server. Okay. So if we go down to build and go down to publish our, our application, now you're going to see that it wants to log into my Windows Azure. I'm already logged in, so I'll just say with this account. Okay. And right now I don't have any profiles, any published profiles. So what I want to do is I want to create a new one. What I can do is I can import this file, the file that we just downloaded from Azure. We're going to import that into Visual Studio. Remember, I say publish profile file. Let's go ahead and find it. And it's the one that I just created. Okay. Now remember we said we need to make a couple small changes to it. Okay. One is, uh, right now what happens is it's using the name of our website, uh, of our virtual machine as our website. And that's actually what we need to do is kind of change it for some DNS purposes to point to it so that I can go out there and find that server to publish it. Uh, this would work fine if it was on a local network. And you can use web deploy on a local network. Uh, but since we're trying to publish through the internet, we need to go ahead and modify this somewhat. And what we need to do is we need to add .cloudapp.net. Likewise, here where it says destination URL, .cloudapp.net. Okay, and let's go ahead and put in our password for our server. And I hope I remember that right. And we can click on validate connection to make sure that it has everything right. And if you have everything right, you're going to see this little security warning because it's using a self-signed certificate to uh, do the HTTPS. And we get a validate connection, we get a little green checkbox, making sure that everything is good. Okay, after validating, what we need to do is we need to make a, a one, one more other change because what will happen is, uh, remember there's some static files that's already on the website. If we don't delete those, what will happen is uh, we're going to see that instead of our actual Iron Speed application. So if we click on Next on Settings, you know that there's an option under File Publish Options to go ahead and remove additional files. And what that will do is that if there's any files on the server that aren't part of your application, uh, the web deploy will go ahead and remove those. We can also recompile our application as we're publishing it. Uh, the other things we don't need to change, uh, we can change our, our connection strings if we wanted to, but these are fine. Okay, and let's go ahead and just publish our application. Now once it publishes, it's actually going to launch it in a web browser, and uh, you can immediately see that it uploaded your application. It's very, very quick. As you can see, it's uploading our application. This is actually one of the fastest ways to publish your application. And here's that application loaded on the server. Right now it's doing the, another compile on the server. And we should see that same single, uh, single page application running on Microsoft Azure. And there it is. So very quickly, all we had to do was uh, run the web platform installer and install the web deploy and then import that web 
that publish settings file into Visual Studio in order to publish our application. Likewise, if we go back and make a change to the application and republish it, it's only going to send the files that have changed, and it'll be a very, very quick way to publish our application. As you can see, this is running on our virtual server on Microsoft Azure. Okay. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or leave a question in the IronSpeed forums. Uh, that concludes this video. Thank you very much.